Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to take a look at how we can add some unit tests in our form validator so that we can actually validate our create form. Now it's worth noting that this is a unit test since we're actually testing just the business logic in a small part of our application. Now if you want to learn more about this then check out my video that breaks down and explains what unit testing is and the other types of tests that we'll be exploring within this course. So let's create a new folder within our project called form and in here we're going to add our unit tests so we'll create a new file called create form validator tests so let's do this now cool so in the previous video i actually showed you that you can create a unit test file by just you know creating a swift file and typing out yourself but there's actually an option here as well when you're actually creating a new file to give you a template to just quickly speed up your unit test to just quickly speed up creating a new unit test file. So let's select this option here. And you'll notice you'll get the option to actually type out the name of the class that you want. And you can choose what you want it to subclass. But, and also the language as well. So in our case, we want to make sure it's XC test case and the language is Swift. And we also want to make sure that the class is called create form validator tests. Now you want to make sure that your test target is selected and you're creating it within the create and you're creating it within the correct folder called form. And what you should realize now is that you have your new file, but this time it's actually automatically generated a template for us to easily write our tests. So all the code in this file here, we're actually not going to go detail in this video about what each one of these are, but in upcoming videos we will discuss what each one actually does. But for now, let's just delete this. And then what we want to do is make sure that we can actually import our target within our test. So let's do that now. Cool. So now we have access to all of the files within our target for that we want to unit test. So what I want to do now is actually just go into our validator and just see what it is we actually want to write tests for. So if I just go into our validator, in order to get this quick search dialog open, we just hit Command Shift O, that should open it up. And then in here, we're just going to type in validator. So we want to go to our create validator. So we want to basically see what it is we want to actually write tests in here for. So looking at this, we want to actually test to see if our first name, last name, and our job is empty. And if it is empty, does it throw the correct error in each one? And we also want to test as well if all of our properties are not empty, then does it not throw? So does it just literally just go through? So what we're going to do now is actually define each one of the tests for those scenarios that I just mentioned. So let's go back into our unit test. I'm just going to close all this to create some space. And then within our unit test here, I'm going to type some tests that represent what it is we're trying to test in our validator and cause them to fail because we want to work our way backwards. So let's do that now. Cool. So now we have all our tests in. And just to make sure they definitely fail, let's just run our class by hitting the play button here. Well, not play, but run button. Cool. And you should see that all of the tests fail within this class, which is exactly what we want. So now we're all good to go. So the first test that we're actually going to do is actually check to see if an error is thrown and if that error thrown is telling us that because the person hasn't entered in a first name. So for this test, so for this test, what we're going to do is actually type this one out together and just basically break down at each step what it is we're trying to achieve. So within our test here, because we're actually basically testing the person's first name is empty, each one of our tests is actually going to have a different type of person object. So what we want to do here is we actually want to create a person where all the fields are empty and what should happen is we should get an error telling us that their first name should be set. So we want to test to see if the error is thrown that we've not set a first name. So let's create a new empty person. And then after this, we're going to create an instance of our validator. And then what we want to do here is we actually want to validate that the error that we expect is being froze. 
So there's actually an assert called XCT assert throws error. And it basically allows you to check to see if an error was thrown. So let's do that now. Now that we have this XCT assert, assert throws error, we're essentially trying to validate and make sure that this function throws errors when something goes wrong. So what we can do now is actually just run this test to see what happens. And you'll see that this test actually succeeds because an error was thrown that the first name was empty. Now, although I'm saying that the error was thrown that the first name was empty, I actually don't actually have any asserts in here to actually validate that that was the error that was specifically thrown. So what we need to do now is actually type some code out to actually check to see if the specific error is the case that we're expecting. So let's type this out now. So underneath here, what we're going to need to do is use a do catch to actually capture that error and then do that comparison. So within our do, we're simply just not going to hold the value. I'm just going to say try validator dot validate person. Cool. And then we're going to create our catch. So within our catch here, this is where we're going to actually access our error and do the comparison. So the first thing we need to do is actually try to cast our error as a create validator error to make sure that's the correct type. And if it isn't, then we're going to throw a failure that we don't have the right type of error. So what we're saying here is that we're trying to cast it as this type. And if it doesn't, you know, cast successfully, then we're actually going to throw an XCT fail because we should only be handling this type of error within our validator. So the next bit we want to do is actually use an XCT assert equal to actually do a comparison between an enum case and the error that was thrown back that we have within this constant here. So underneath here, we're just going to say XCT assert. Equal. And our first expression is going to be validation error. And then we're going to compare it to our create validation error dot invalid first name like so. And then the message in here we're going to say is that we're expecting the error to tell us that you have an invalid first name. So if we don't have an invalid first name, then we're going to see this message. Cool. So now let's actually run this test. Cool. And you can see here that the test actually passes. Now, just to show you that this is definitely working and you want to actually see how to make this fail, you actually change the case here that we're trying to match against our validation error. So if I change this from invalid first name to invalid last name, you should realize that a test should actually fail. Cool. And you'll see here that the, the test fails and we actually get our error message explaining to us why it failed as well. So let's actually fix this again. Cool. So I'm hoping that you're starting to see a bit of a pattern here when you're writing your unit test, where you're essentially just validating that what you've done is correct. So you're basically just checking to see if this equals something else. So now the next test that we need to do is actually copy this test, but except this time, rather than just leaving all of our properties within a new person empty, we're actually going to fill out all of the other properties except from the first name. So let's do this now. So if we actually just create a new person, but with a last name and a job, So you should see the initializer, we can type in a first name, last name, and a job. But what we want to do is just leave the first name empty. So we're just going to say last name. And then I'm just going to put ads and then job. You can put whatever you want. I'm just going to say iOS dev. Cool. Sweet. So now we actually need to create an instance of our validator. Now, when we actually created our template before, we actually had two functions called a setup and a teardown. Now, what you normally want to do is that the system that you're actually testing, you actually want to clear this between every single test to make sure that you actually don't have any stale data in between. So what we're about to do is actually implement these two functions that allow us to basically clean our validator and we don't have to create an instance of a validator every single time within every single function. So let's do that now. But before we do that, let's just fix our parameter name here. Cool. So if you just go to the top of your, you know, on top of your function here, and you just type setup, 
you should see that you have a few you know functions here that you can use so within setup there's actually different options that you have here so you have options for when you want to have a class function when it's been initialized async and throw so if you want to throw an, if you want to allow allow it to throw a error when you're trying to set up your tests and all these other ones as well now the one we're going to use is this one here which provides an opportunity to customize the initial state before a test case begins so let's hit enter and we just want to make sure that we don't use the class here so we just take that out and then we're going to use the alternative one called teardown so teardown essentially allows you to clear your basically your system under test before each test is run so let's just use this and then also take out the class because we don't want that cool so within the setup and a teardown we're going to basically create an instance and also clear up our create validator so let's do this now so at the top here we're going to create a private var called validator and it's going to be create validator like so and we're going to use a bang because it's never going to be nil because we're always going to set it up between each test so now what we want to do is create an instance of our validator like so and then within our teardown we actually want to set it to nil cool so now we don't actually need to do this within every test we can actually just take this out and then each one of our tests will use the validator that we set up and tear down between each test now you might be wondering why did I not also put in the new person between the setup and the teardown as well now the reason why that is because within each test we're actually going to have a different type of person object we don't actually want to write code within our setup to actually you know validate like for this test have this person for that test have this person instead it just makes sense to put our person between and create an instance of it within each test cool so now we can easily just use our validator to assert that an error is thrown as well within this test case here so i'm just going to copy this because we're expecting the same type of error cool and then what we want to validate here is that our first invalid first name test is thrown as well so essentially it's the exact same that we have here so let's just copy this and then paste it in here like so cool so just to make sure that this works let's actually run our class to see the two test pass cool and now you should see that both of our tests actually pass sweet so now we're moving on to our next test case here we're going to validate if the last name error is thrown so let's actually just first of all again we're going to create a new person this time but only with a first name and a job cool so we don't actually have a last name here for our person so again we want to actually check to see if an error is thrown so I'm just going to copy this and paste it in here but for our message here we don't actually want it to be an empty first name should be thrown we want it to be an empty last name should be thrown because we're now writing tests to check the last name cool so our code here again is pretty similar to this do catch here except the only difference is is on the last bit we're going to be validating whether you have an invalid last name so let's just copy this again and then paste it and then we're going to change what we're checking for here from invalid first name to invalid last name and then we're also going to change our message here to invalid last name as well cool so let's just run this test to see what happens cool and that passes so on to the next one. I'm hoping you can see a bit of a pattern here. So we're actually going to test here to see if we have an empty job, does an error get thrown? So again, let's create a new person with a first name and a last name, but no job. Cool. And then after here, we're going to assert it again but this time we don't want it to check for an empty last name we want to check it for empty job cool and then similarly again we're going to copy what we're trying to test here and then this time instead of us having invalid last name we're going to have invalid job 
and then change our error message here to be invalid job. Cool. And now to test this out, let's run it. Perfect. So now we have all of our tests in where we're basically making sure that the right error gets thrown when either one of our properties is empty. But one thing to note here is that we actually have an extra test here. We want to make sure that nothing is thrown when we fill out our entire, you know, person object. So we want to ensure here that if you fill out your first name, last name and your job, we actually don't throw any errors. And if an error is thrown, then we want to cause an XET fail. So let's create a new person. And then this time we're actually going to fill out all of the required, well not required, but all of the parameters. Cool. And then underneath here, what we're going to do this time is we actually don't need to validate that an error is thrown because we don't want to throw an error. We want to check to see if no errors are thrown because we filled out everything here. So we're going to write a do catch this time. And within the catch, we're going to write a fail if we reach that stage. So let's actually just say try. So equals try and then validator dot validate person. And then within our catch, we're just simply going to do a fail. So we're going to say XTT fail. And then in our message here, we're going to simply say that no errors should be thrown since the person should be a valid object. Cool. So now let's just run this test as well. Sweet. And you can now see that this test passed as well. So whenever we fill out all of our parameters, we actually don't get any errors thrown to us when we try to validate a person. So now we actually have all of the test cases within our create form validator that we want to ensure works properly. Sweet. So in the next video, we're actually going to discuss dependency injection since this concept is something that we're going to implement in our integration test that will be coming soon. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit.